Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Harker Road Adams channel here on YouTube. My name is Drew Hare. I'm with my analysts, Chris Adams and Matt Harker Road. Hey, we're guys. here to talk about the AFC and NFC championship games. Chris, we're going to start with you. You get to brag a little bit. Matt bragged last week about all of his picks. Chris, you went 4-0 and last week. Floor is yours. Yeah, thanks, Drew. Um, it was a good week. Uh -huh. I um, say. And I'm going to spend, actually, most of the time here talking about uh, my pick of the Tennessee Titans. Because um, the other three, I, mean, I took three favorites and number six seed. So um, San Francisco had a pretty sound, uh, sound beating of Minnesota. Matt, it looks like Kirk Cousins' moment ran out a little bit. Um, it was a short moment. Yes. <laughs> um, the uh, K Kansas City-Houston game was bonkers, and I'm sure we'll, we'll dedicate a little time to that one, but um, mm. I said Kansas City was going to win comfortably, which they did. It wasn't didn't play out the way I necessarily thought it would, um, but they did win comfortably. And uh, Green Bay-Seattle was an entertaining game um, with Green Bay jumping out to a lead and then holding on. Um, but, again, nothing su super of notes uh, in that one. But, I mean, the big story was Tennessee uh, upending Baltimore. Um, and maybe it's Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry who are having the moment. Um, and certainly Coach Rabel um, for getting that team, team to go. Um, so, with a little trepidation, I picked the Titans. Um, Part just to go out on the limb a little bit because I've been kind of chalky with my predictions all year, so I thought, why not? Um, but also, I thought of all the teams that Baltimore was going to be could be playing, Tennessee presented maybe the toughest matchup challenge. Um, and then they did something to the Ravens that nobody's really done since the Browns back when they beat them in September, and that's get up, get on a lead against them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I also sort of thought that. I just didn't see Baltimore ending the season on a 17 game winning streak and winning the Super Bowl. So I thought somebody was going to get them at some point and lo and behold, it ended up being Tennessee. Um, and the Titans getting that lead was huge. Um, you know, Lamar Jackson, obviously we, we've talked about him at length on this channel. He's going to be the MVP most likely. Um, but if you look, you look at him, he is a true legitimate dual threat quarterback. He can beat you with his arm and he can beat you with his legs. Part of that, though, is the fact – part of the reason he's so effective as a passer is because you have to account for his running game because he's so dynamic running the football. And part of the reason why he's such an effective runner is he is a really good passer as well. So, you, you know, you literally don't know what, what to, how to defend him because he could, mm -hmm. could beat you with any, with any way. How do you make him one-dimensional? Di one you get a lead. That's exactly what the Titans did. They came out there, a couple big plays from their defense, huge fourth down stops. And I don't blame Harbaugh and the Ravens for going for it, uh, at least the first time. When you've got fourth and one, you've, year. Got, you've got Lamar yeah, Jackson. Yeah, they've been all year, too. Yeah, yeah. And, all, and Ingram and all those guys. But the, 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 the uh, Tennessee defense showed up. Tannehill made some big-time throws. And then all of a sudden, they made Lamar Jackson one-dimensional, right? His deep ball fluttered a little bit. Their receivers were dropping balls. Ingram was not at 100%. And the Stars just aligned for – of uh, this Tennessee story to, to continue right on into the championship game. You know, I think Tennessee had a really great game plan for, uh, you know, for Lamar. Um, if, if you watch that game, they kept their defensive ends, their blitzers on the outside to kind of keep him in the pocket. Um, I think, um, you know, the idea behind um, getting Lamar are a little flustered, you know, that pick he threw early in the game, missing that, you know, that first fourth down try, I think all of that stuff kind of wrapped up, um, you know, and, and made it, uh, you know, uh, much more uncomfortable than Lamar's been for most of the season. You know, they've been with big leads early, uh, able to do whatever they wanted. Uh, but, you know, under a little pressure, uh, he showed, you know, he's a second year quarterback. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't say that he played horribly. Um, he Stats didn't have are great. <clears throat> he well, not great, a, not touchdowns, but he ran, he threw for a boatload of yards and ran for a bunch of yards. Yep. He didn't have a whole lot of uh, help uh, yeah. offensively, uh, for sure. And, uh, you know, they kept, the two the picks. Ball, they kept the ball away from him, um, you know, by running the ball as much as they did with Derrick Henry, who is just having maybe one of the best post seasons any running back has had in a long, long time. Um, and, and, you know, you, know, you kind of look at that one and you say, it's maybe the one game 
um, that you could say that wasn't defined by quarterback play in this, it, it, you know, you kind of look at, um, you know, the, the, the Packers game, uh, you know, that <laughs> Aaron Rodgers ices a game by making clutch throws late in a game to win a game, you know, um, and you go to uh, the Kansas city game and Patrick Mahomes had maybe one of the best throwing games ever in the history of the NFL, not alone, let alone uh, in just uh, um, in the playoffs, but let alone any time of the season. Uh, and then you, you didn't get what you needed to get um, uh, out of uh, Deshaun Watson in that game. Um, so, and, and, you know, you mentioned Kirk Cousins uh, earlier as in having, you know, not the moment he needed to have in that game. Um, so I think there was a lot of quarterback stories this week and maybe you know, I, I think maybe we're overblown on a lot of the talk about how Lamar Jackson's been figured out or, you know, he uh, was overrated. Um, that's not what I watched in that game. And uh, it's kind of funny that that's the one quarterback's, you know, storyline that seems to be dominating, um, you know, the pundits after this game was, you know, after this week was over. Um, and so it's it's kind of it's kind of weird. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, you mentioned, you know, I think we walked through most of the games here, but um, not as entertaining as the week previous had been, but um, some just monumental performances for the ages by a couple of players. This yeah. felt like a, it felt like a good, like a Peyton Manning MVP type season where he would win the MVP and that you would always have like that second and, or, you know, championship game, like kind of meltdown from him. But it's, I think comfort or uncomfortable was a good way to put it, Matt, because Lamar looked uncomfortable. But even when they were down 24 nothing, Mahomes did not look uncomfortable, especially in that second quarter where he just came out and just – that was about as good of a quarterback that you could see for a quarterback anywhere at any right. point in any season. And so I think just, you know, Kansas City, the way that they're built, they don't ever feel uncomfortable regardless yeah. of what the, 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 uh, the score is. And Baltimore, you can't say the same thing about that. Right. Yeah, and one, one other thing on Kansas City, um, you know, you could argue that – yeah, it was kind of crazy that they were down 20, 24 to nothing and made and had that it was an amazing comeback. But you could argue also that the only reason they were down to down twenty four to nothing early were those special teams gaffes that they made. You know, two fumbles um, in their in their own red zone on punts. One led to a touchdown. The other set up a touchdown. You know, if you take a couple special teams flukes out of that game, God, Kansas City maybe wins that game by forty. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and to what you said, I mean, I think that's what you look back and you like. What's the main storyline from each game? And for the Kansas City game, to me, it's um, Patrick Mahomes just went unbelievably insane in that game. Um, got tired of not, you know, not his team not performing well. Took a, took it over through some of the better passes you'll ever see anyone throw in that game. I mean, there was a one pass where he hit Kelsey in the pocket, like literally dropped a ball. <laughs> into his pocket and he threw that ball before he made Kelsey made his break. Like, how does that even happen? Um, yeah. I mean, and you just, you take that and you take, um, like I said, Kirk Cousins just having a pretty poor game. They couldn't do anything against that San Francisco defense. Uh, not just him, but the whole team. Um, yeah. And so I think <clears throat> you break it down. Aaron Rodgers um, had, you know, maybe not statistically his best game ever, but, clutch performance at the end of the game to ice it to not give that ball back uh to Russell Wilson um and and you know we talked about Lamar just not having you know two picks and two I mean totaling four turnovers when you consider he didn't make the first downs on those fourth down tries that they they failed on um so um you know, it kind of shares everything. And then the only other player that's really worth mentioning from anybody is Derrick Henry, who is just, again, having an unbelievable postseason. So an analogy here, kind of a cross-positional analogy. What Derrick Henry's doing is kind of reminding me of Larry Fitzgerald in 2009, when, right. he, when he's like carried the Cardinals on his back almost to a Super Bowl championship. Yeah, I mean, what I mean, Tannehill has less than 200 yards throwing in this postseason, um, and and I wouldn't say he's been playing bad. It's just not been the game plan yeah, to throw the ball, play. right? Yeah, I mean, he mm -hmm. hit that big touchdown pass, um, you know, in the in this game past this past weekend. Um, but otherwise, I mean, he threw for maybe 30 yards after that, um, and so 
uh, yeah, it's just crazy that they can get that kind of production when everyone on in the entire stadium knows what they're going to do with the ball. And Derrick Henry still manages to make holes for himself. And that offensive line is playing out of their damn mind. Um, they are opening holes for him big enough for him to just truck through and get yeah. five extra yards after contact. Um, and, and, you know, man, I, I didn't realize, I guess, I had not watched a ton of Tennessee games this, in, you know, maybe in the past couple of years, but Derek Henry's got a pretty good top end speed for a guy as big as he is. Um, and, and he showed that a couple of times in this game. And uh, there's nothing you can say bad about anything he has done. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if, if they were to, you know, get on in this next round, uh, you know, if they gave out a uh, playoffs MVP, he's it right now. I yeah. mean, and, uh, you know, hats off to him. Yeah, and so yeah, and so let's go ahead and shift gears. Let's talk about the the championship games coming up. Before we get into that, I want to talk. We want to play a quick game of rank the quarterbacks. Um, so obviously, there's only four. We're quarterbacks good at ranking left. quarterbacks. I yeah. know that's what that's what we do here on the Hard World that you know, But for this game, I just want you guys to rank the four of who you think is going to perform the best to the worst. I mean, obviously, we would expect like in, in any you know, and an overarching season that Mahomes and Rodgers would be near the top, and Tannehill and Garoppolo, you can. You know, it'd be three, four, in whatever order you wanted. Is that still going to be the case for this weekend, or do you guys think that you know maybe Tannehill's going to continue to surprise us? Is Garoppolo going to do a little bit more to kind of have a little bit of a shootout between you know Green Bay and San Francisco? Rank them. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, to me, if you take a look at these four guys and you think who needs to have the best performance to to make. Um, to win a game. And, and to me, I think it has to be Aaron Rodgers. That San Francisco defense looked phenomenal, um, you know, last week. Um, Aaron Rodgers has really good weaponry. When he, you know, he's got a, a good run game, plus uh, he's got, you know, a great one wide receiver and a couple of other guys that have been doing pretty well for him uh, as of late. And you think, like, what's the pathway, uh, what's a pathway for, uh, the Packers to win that game. And the only pathway really to me is a phenomenal performance from Aaron Rodgers. Um, you take a look at the other games and you say, All right, does, does Garoppolo need to play out of his mind to win that game? Probably not. Does Tannehill need to play out of his mind to play that? Probably not. There are pathways for Tennessee to win that game. Um, will uh, you know, I think he probably will need to make a couple of really big plays, and I think he's going to have to throw for more than 100 yards. Um, but again, he doesn't need to be the lead story. So I guess if I'm going to break it down, I, I don't, I don't see how Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes has a bad game at this point. He is on fire. Um, right. So if I'm ranking them, do I think Aaron Rodgers can will have a big performance again in San Francisco? I think he might be in some serious trouble with that, uh, that pressure that they're going to put on him um, and having to take that over. Um, so I guess I, I think Patrick Mahomes is going to have the best week. Um, and then maybe uh, on a limb, I will say, um, because, you know, the, the smart money would be Mahomes, Rogers, uh, Tannehill, Garoppolo, flip those two, whichever way you want to go. Um, but I'll say that Aaron Rodgers has a bad week because of the defense he's got going against him. Um, and I think Tannehill um, will have to make some big plays, and he's capable of doing so. Um, so I'll go Tannehill second, uh, Aaron Rodgers three, and then, again, Garoppolo doesn't have to do much, I don't think, to win a game against the Packers if he doesn't have to. And he probably won't have to. Um, so, right, and We've already seen how, you know, Rodgers against this 49ers defense this year and it certainly wasn't pretty then either when they played like you know two months ago um Chris what do you think I mean Matt uh said a lot of the same stuff I agree with um I agree with what he said about Rodgers he needs to have a huge game in order for them to to win here's the thing though I think he will um I mean I think the experience the ability he's playing at a high level um you know, we, we've talked on this channel um that you know he's it hasn't – the Packers haven't had to been all Rodgers all the time this year, and that's that's true. They've gotten more support in the running game and on the defense. Um, but I think this is a game where they need Aaron to to lead them, um, to to take him over the top. And I know they got whooped by the Niners in the regular season, um, 
But I'm going to go on that. He's learned from that. Uh, LaFleur and uh, coaching staff can make some adjustments there. Um, and that he's going to have a big game. I think he's actually, I think he's going to have a huge game. Um, Pat Mahomes, I kind of agree with, with Matt said, whereas Rodgers needs to have a huge game to win, Patrick Mahomes can probably win with a good game. Um, which, again, I don't see him having a bad game, um, although I do think this is a better defense than, the, the, than what Houston had. Um, and I think Tennessee is going to go with the same strategy of ball control offense and try to keep Mahomes, Mahomes off the field. Um, it's a good way to defend him. Uh, you know, the best defense is a good offense, I guess, in the case of Tennessee here. Um, and uh, I think – I do think Tannehill has to have maybe not a f- amazing game, but I think he has to have a really, really good game. I mean, I think he's going to have to throw for close to, you know, 250, maybe pushing 300 yards in addition to getting Derrick Henry be, continuing to be Derrick Henry. Um, so I'm going to say Rodgers, Mahomes, Tannehill, Garoppolo. Okay. I like it. It works for me. Hey, let's go ahead and dive on into the games. So we'll start with the AFC games, um, the AFC game between the uh, the Titans and the Chiefs. That's going to be the first one on Sunday as well. Uh, Matt, is, right now it looks like it's going to be Chiefs minus seven and a half. Is that a fair line? Do you think it should be closer? How are you, what kind of feel do you have for this game? You know what? I, that, to me, right now, you know, to me, this game could be a 40-point blowout by Kansas City. I mean, really, it's got all the earmarks of that being a possibility, um, especially if Tan- – I mean, if they make any mistakes and give Mahomes any more um, chances in a game, uh, you know, it, wouldn't, it would not shock me uh, that both of these teams come in there thinking – and really considering trick plays on fourth down and, um, you know, uh, random onside kicks because they both need the other team not to have the ball. Uh, and because if, if say something happened and you got down 10 points to Tennessee and you're the Kansas city chiefs and you're thinking, okay, Mahomes can just do what he did last week. No, that's not going to happen because you're not going to get that many opportunities uh, because they can grind you down uh, and they'll do that with Derrick Henry. Um, so seven points seems a little low if I'm, I'm just thinking of it, just because of the performance that uh, um, Kansas City put on. Uh, they'll be at home. Um, I don't know if Tennessee can just keep this up. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm rooting for him just because it's the funnest thing going on right now in football. Um, but yeah, to me, you know, if, if you're asking me to take a pick, uh, to me, I, I think I got to take Kansas City at this point. They look like the better team. I mean, that performance from the second quarter on was the best performance we've seen um, in the, you know, in the playoffs thus far by anybody. Uh, and uh, and San Francisco played out of their minds the other night too. So, um, yeah, to me, I think I got to take Kansas City. And I think you know, if I was betting, um, which you know I don't do, uh, but if I was betting. Um, I'd probably take the Chiefs with plus seven. Chris, how are you feeling? Yeah, um, as much as I want to see this Tennessee Tannehill story continue another week, um, I just don't like the uh, I don't like this matchup as much for them. Um, I've been kind of saying the I I said that when this playoff started, I kind I liked the Chiefs. I thought they were kind of lie, laying in the weeds below Baltimore and New England. Um, you know, and now it's almost like they've they've let t- Tennessee do the upsetting for them. Um, and I think they might run out of gas. I mean, this, is, this kind of is reminiscent of that, those NCAA tournaments where you have maybe like an eight seed, you know, knocks off the number one seed and then knocks off the number four seed. And then the number, the number two seed, who's kind of just cruised along, um, gets to play plays that number uh, that number eight seed Cinderella in the regional finals and then just blows the doors off because they're exhausted from having two two upsets. And I could kind of see that happening here. I uh, much as I again as I would like to see Tennessee win this, I think Kansas City uh, wins this one and uh, I I think they cover as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting because we've always talked about, like, what do you have to do to win in the playoffs? Run the ball, play good defense. And that's obviously what Tennessee is really good at. But mm-hmm. then you see what Kansas City is able to do, just throwing the ball all over the place. Yeah. They can run with a little bit, and their defense is, you know, bend, not break. 
but you know, is Kansas City essentially breaking the mold when it comes to what you can do and get away with in the playoffs? But I mean, I think it, maybe, this year's yeah. this year's playoff shows you it's something that I've been harping on all year in these videos is that there are, are multiple ways to build a good football team, and this playoffs is, is just showing you that. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's switch gears and talk about the NFC Championship game uh, coming on six forty around six forty on Sunday, and the line's pretty similar. It's going to be the home team, the 49ers, minus seven and a half. Chris, you're predicting a big Aaron Rodgers game. So if it's a big Aaron Rodgers game, I'm assuming a Packers win as well. I'm going to say that. Yeah. And as I mean, I, this is kind of a, maybe another, maybe I'm getting a little, a uh, little full of myself after getting the Tennessee pick right last week. But again, when this playoff started, I said, watch out for the, the chiefs and the, and the Packers. Um, and again, they kind of, both of those kind of flew under the radar. Um, can San Francisco look really, really good last week. Um, there's no doubt about that, but it was 14 to 10 at halftime. Um, and then they made the adjustments that, uh, Minnesota couldn't. Um, and Kirk Cousins was bad in the second half. Aaron Rodgers is better than Kirk Cousins. Whoa. I said, uh, um, <laughs> um, I am banking on a big game from Rodgers, And I think, I think, uh, the Packers win a very close one, maybe by a point or two. So what not- do you think of- um, yeah, to me, I just think this Packers team isn't all it's cracked up to be. Um, I think that they kind of, I mean, we were talking about how San Francisco, or, uh, sorry, Seattle didn't look great going into this past week. Um, and, you know, that was a close game. Uh, and, and I just don't think the, the Packers have uh, what they need to go into San Francisco and win. Um, I, I think that earlier game this season, yeah, you could say maybe they learned from it, but they're still going to be all over Aaron Rodgers and they're going to be chasing him all over the place uh, because they're not afraid, uh, you know, of that running attack from Green Bay. Uh, and I, I don't, you know, Bosa is going to be blitzing on every down he's in the game. He's going to be going full out. Um, and, uh, you know, you break down position by position. I think San Francisco has a better roster. Um, and I agree do that. I think they'll cut? Um, do I think they'll cover? Probably not. Um, it's not really their MO to put up a ton of points. And it is Aaron Rodgers on the other side. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I've got to take San Francisco on this one. Um, and so uh, bucking trends, I'll be the person going chalk this time. <laughs> I will, I will add into that one to go with my Green Bay pick. They've got to get the lead. Um, kind of similar to – I think te- you could say the same thing about Tennessee. Actually, Tennessee and Green Bay, both of those teams, if they win the toss, they better damn well take the ball to start the game because neither one of those teams wants to get behind. Right, and then they need to score, and they'll need to right. score quick. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Tennessee's key to the game uh, is hope that you can turn them over. Uh, uh-huh. A couple of times, whether it be special teams uh, or, you know, getting a strip or something off of a wide receiver or a bounce ball that didn't get pocketed, uh, didn't get put in somebody's pocket like uh, Patrick Mahomes was doing last week. Um, and then slow them down, you know, slow them down, get a turnover, score when you can, uh, because you're going to have to stop them a couple of times. And nobody right now is doing that. And, in, in you know, and I don't think. I, I agree with you when you said Tennessee's defense, I think, is a little bit better. And the scheme that Rabel put together to stop uh, another juggernaut offense this year uh, with Baltimore um, proves that the guy can scheme yeah. uh, defensively. And so if that's the case, maybe they've got a shot. And like I said, I'm rooting for them just because this is a fun story, uh, the Tannehill redemption story. Mm-hmm. And uh, any story where, uh, you know, the running back is the lead feature part of your offense in the playoffs – um it's a fun it's just fun you know so let's let's hope that that happens but uh yeah I, i'm gonna take both both of the favorites sadly right. sounds good any final thoughts on either game anything we haven't covered yet before we switch to the coaching carousel hopefully there will continue to be some some fun and entertaining games yeah i agree I, and i think they both set up that yeah. way and yeah uh unless again patrick mahomes just goes crazy and they win by 40. <laughs> I mean, best, I mean, best what, possible start for Tennessee in that game is they get the ball to start it and they put together like a six or seven minute drive ending in a touchdown. That's a perfect start to that game for the Titans. Yeah, they need a uh, bunch of six or seven minute drives yeah. to win that game. I mean, I think 
Pat Mahomes throwing four or five touchdowns in a game would, is also a lot of fun. But yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> All right. So before we get before we finish up, we just want to take a couple of minutes to talk about the Browns coaching search and now their uh, actual announced coach, uh, Kevin Stefanski. Um, I know you guys have both been we've been talking offline um, over the last couple of days. You guys have been kind of all over the place, not really you know, finalizing how you feel about it. But just initial thoughts, Matt, let's start with you and then we'll go with you, Chris. To me, picking a coach in the NFL is just like drafting a, a quarterback in the second round. Um, it seems to be just as random. Um, I never know. I always think one thing and it turns out the other way, unless it's a guy who's like a super ultra, you know, veteran coach, like an Andy Reid, when Andy Reid goes to Kansas city, you know, he's going to be fine. Um, but like most of the time when it's a, a coordinator, they're moving up. I just don't know if there's uh, yeah, it's like, how do you learn how to be a president of the United States or something, you know? everyone thinks they want that job until they get into it. And then there, some people just can't do it. And some people, uh, you know, uh, rise to the occasion. And I think NFL coaching is that way. It's just that it's a, it's maybe the biggest question mark and maybe the most important part of building a, an NFL franchise and not doing it right. Um, can set your, you know, set you back for years. Um, so I hate saying like, this guy's going to be great. This guy's going to be horrible because, I honestly don't know. I think Stefanski had a great press conference. He said everything right. Um, I think, uh, you know, going and picking a, an idea for your organization as being this analyst, you know, analytics driven thing seems to make more sense to me than, oh, we're going to throw this guy who doesn't agree with this guy and this other guy who doesn't agree with this guy all in a room and see what happens. Um, <laughs> You know, to me, get a bunch of guys that are on the same page um, and give that a shot as opposed to, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's let them fight it out in the, in the war room every day. Uh, so, um, yeah, so, I, I mean, again, everybody says Stefanski is a great guy, great coach um, across the board. That's the story. Uh, and so uh, I don't see any reason why he won't succeed. I'm not disappointed with it. Um, there isn't. There wasn't a whole lot of names on the list of potentials I would have been more excited for or less excited for. Um, yeah, I just want somebody, um, you know, that understands that, you know, football isn't a bunch of buddies hanging out in a room um, and then hoping that everything works out because you think you're a genius. Um, and, and that's what we had. And I'm glad that that's gone. <laughs> so, Chris? Yeah, um, so I wasn't high on the Stefanski hire when it first was announced. Um, so if we would have shot this video on Monday, I might have had a different opinion. Um, but I've, I've come around a bit over the past couple of days. I agree, he killed the press conference. Now, many Browns have won the press, coaches have won the press conference before and, <laughs> and failed. But for what it's worth, he did great. I also heard him on, our, on the radio today. Um, a lot of the people around the league speak very highly of him. Um, and in a vacuum, there's a ton of stuff to like about the guy. Um, he seems like he, he's got his, you know, what together. Um, does not seem like he has much of an ego, which is so huge um, in, this, in these situations. Because um, I sometimes think that being, becoming a football coach automatically gives you a giant ego, um, <laughs> regardless of what you did before. And usually that ends bad. Um, but I think he'll be willing to make adjustments um, from a schematic, a scheme uh, situation, he's going to put in something similar to what the Vikings run, which is also pretty similar to what the Niners run, that, uh, that zone running, the Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan style. And I think that pairs perfectly with what the Browns have um, with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Um, also yeah, they can Minnesota, bring Kareem back, yeah, for sure. Minnesota, they've also had two big-time wide receivers. So do the Browns. Um, Baker Mayfield, Matt, I think he has more talent than Kirk Cousins. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll if, see. If Stefanski can get him out of this. Maybe, just maybe, the Browns will actually get a fullback for this year, which gets, it gets me very excited. Um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot of things to like, like in him in a vacuum. Um, I still don't know about the whole Paul De Podesta, you know, analytics-driven team. Um, I think there's some good things there. Um, you know, I think having a, a data-driven mindset is a smart one. Um, what I hope is that they don't get married to it. 
I think a perfect example is in Philadelphia with, with Howie Roseman, who's, you know, a lawyer and he's a, he's a big analytics guy. They do a lot of analytics based decisions at the same time. What's Howie Roseman's signature move throwing analytics to the wind and trading up for a quarterback in a draft. So I think being able to have that flexibility is, is, is crucial. Um, and hopefully whoever they bring in as the GM uh, will be aligned in that and be able to, you know, use data to make, to, to, to set processes in place, but not be afraid to, uh, to deviate when necessary or to do, you know, trust the, the old school scouts um, in a certain situation on, on player evaluation. Yeah. Analytics should assist your decision-making, right. not be the only thing that guides your decision-making. So, all right, guys, well, let's get everybody out of here. So uh, thank you guys both for joining us and thank you all out there for coming to watch our video. So uh, in the upcoming weeks um, between now and then the actual Super Bowl Sunday, we're going to try to get one, maybe two uh, videos out there. So just continue to keep, uh, an eye on this channel uh, hit the subscribe button like us follow us uh and for drew hair uh, my twitter is at mr andrew hair chris what's your twitter uh at the c adams matt and i'm at at matt hark all right we're also going to get a, a hark road adams uh, twitter kind of up and running soon as well so thanks for everyone for watching and we'll see you again soon thanks everyone bye guys thanks